What makes you honor London so suddenly? Our season's nearly over. I wanted to meet you. It's quite true. You know what a woman's curiosity is, almost as great as a man's. I wanted immensely to meet you and to ask you to do something for me. Well, I hope it's not a little thing. I always find that little things are so difficult to do. No, I uh, don't think it's quite a little thing. I'm so glad. Do tell me, what is it? Later on. And now, may I walk through your beautiful house? I hear your pictures are charming. Poor Baron Arnheim. You remember the Baron. Used to tell me you had some wonderful paintings. Did you know the Baron well? Intimately, did you? That one time, yes. Wonderful man, wasn't he? He was most remarkable in many ways. I often think it's such a pity that he never wrote his memoirs. They would have been most interesting. Now, my dear Arthur, Mrs. Chidley, allow me to introduce Lord Goring, the idlest man in London. I've met Lord Goring before. I didn't think you'd remember me, Mrs. Cheever. My memory's under admirable control. And are you still a bachelor? I believe so. Oh, very romantic. Oh, I'm not at all romantic. I'm not old enough. I leave romance to my seniors. Lord Goring is the result of Boodle's Club, Mrs. Cheever. He reflects every credit on the institution. A man talked to me about his wife the whole time. How very trivial of him. What martyrs we are, dear Margaret, and how well it becomes us, Olivia. I'm afraid Lord Goring is in the Kentucky enemy as usual. I saw him talking to that Mrs. Cheveley when he came in. A very handsome woman, Mrs. Cheveley. Please don't praise other women in our presence. You might wait for us to do that. I did wait. Well, we are not going to praise her. I hear that she went to the opera on Monday night and said that as far as she could see, London society was entirely made up of dowdies and dandies. Well, she's quite right there. The men are all dowdies and the women are all dandies, aren't they? Oh, do you really think that is what Mrs. Cheveley meant? Why are you talking about Mrs. Cheveley? Everybody is talking about Mrs. Cheveley. Lord Goring, I'm very hungry. Would you give me some supper? With pleasure. You're very horrid tonight. You've hardly spoken to me at all. How could I? You went off with a child diplomat. You should have followed us. Pursuit would have been at least polite. I don't think I like you at all this evening. I like you tremendously. Well, I wish you'd be a little more marked about it. <laughs> Olivia, I have a curious feeling of absolute failures. I think I should like some supper very much. I know I should like some supper. I'm positively dying for supper, Margaret. Men are so horribly selfish. They never think of these things. Men are grossly material. Grossly material. Cortez, may I have the honor of taking you down to supper? I never take supper, thank you, Vicomte. But I will come down with you with pleasure. <laughs> some supper, Mrs. Marchmont? Thank you, Mr. Monford. I never touch supper. But I will sit beside you and watch you. I don't know that I like being watched when I'm eating. Then I will watch someone else. I don't think I should like that either. Pray, Mr. Monford, do not make these painful scenes of jealousy in public. I want to talk to you about a great political and financial scheme. About the Argentine Canal scheme, in fact. Oh, what a tedious and practical subject to talk about. Oh, I like tedious practical subjects. But I don't like a tedious practical people. Besides, you are interested, I know, in international canal schemes. You and Lord Bradley's secretary, weren't you, when the government bought the Suez Canal share? Ah, oh, but the Suez Canal was a great and splendid undertaking. This Argentine scheme is nothing but a commonplace stock exchange swindle. Speculation, Sir Robert. A brilliant, daring speculation. Believe me, Mrs. Cheveley, it's a swindle. Let us call things by their proper names. It makes matters simpler. We have all the information about it at the Foreign Office. I hope you've not invested in it. I've invested very largely. Who could have advised you to do such a foolish thing? Your old friend of mine, Baron Arnheim. It was his last romance. His last but one to do him justice. No, well, Mrs. Chivley, I fear I have no advice to offer you, except to interest yourself in something a little less dangerous. The success of the canal, of course, depends on the attitude of England. 
and I am to lay my report before the house tomorrow night. That you must not do, Sir Robert. In your own interest, to say nothing of mine, you must not do that. My own interest? My dear Mrs. Cheveley, what do you mean? Sir Robert, I will be quite frank with you. I want you to withdraw the report that you'd intended to lay before the house, on the ground that you have reasons to believe that the commissioners have been prejudiced or misinformed or something. Then I want you to say a few words to the effect that the government is going to reconsider the question and that you have reasons to believe that the canal, if completed, will be of great international value. Will you do that for me? Mrs. Cheveley, you cannot be serious in making me such a proposition. Oh, but I'm quite serious. Pray allow me to believe that you are not. Oh, but I am. And if you do what I ask you to, I will pay you very handsomely. Pay me? Yes. I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean. Oh, how disappointing. And I've come all the way from Vienna in order that you should thoroughly understand me. I fear that I do not. My dear Sir Robert, you're a man of the world and you have your price, I suppose. Everybody has nowadays. The only drawback is that most people are so dreadfully expensive. I know I am. I hope that you will be more reasonable in your terms. If you'll allow me, I'll call your carriage for you now. You've lived abroad so long, Mrs. Cheveley, you seem unable to realize you're talking to a gentleman. Wait. I realize that I'm talking to a man who laid the foundation of his fortune by selling to a stock exchange speculator a cabinet secret. What do you mean? I mean that I know the real origin of your wealth and your career, and I've got your letter, too. What letter? The letter you wrote to Baron Arnheim when you were Lord Radley's secretary telling the Baron to buy Suez Canal shares. A letter written three days before the government announced its own purchase. It's not true. You thought that letter had been destroyed? How foolish of you. I have it in my possession. The affair to which you allude was no more than a speculation. The House of Commons had not yet passed the bill. It might have been rejected. It was a swindle, Sir Robert. Let us call things by their proper names. It makes matters simpler. And now I'm going to sell you that letter. And the price I ask is your public support of the Argentine scheme. I cannot do what you ask me. You mean you cannot help doing it. It's not for you to make terms. It's for you to accept them. Suppose you refuse. What then? My dear Sir Robert, what then? You're ruined, that is all. Suppose that I leave this house and drive to some newspaper office and give them this scandal and the proofs of it. Think of their loathsome joy, of the delight they would have in dragging you down, of the mud and mire they'd plunge you in. Stop. You want me to withdraw the report and make a short speech saying I think there are possibilities in the scheme. Those are my terms. I'll give you any sum of money you want. Even you are not rich enough, Sir Robert, to buy back your past. No man is. You must give me time to consider your proposal. No, you must settle now. Give me a week. Three days. Impossible. I must telegraph to Vienna tonight. I consent. Oh, thank you. I knew we should come to an amicable agreement. And uh, now you may call my carriage for me. I see that the people are coming up from supper. Englishmen always get so romantic after a meal and it bores me dreadfully. What a charming house you have, Lady Chilton. I've spent a delightful evening. It's been so interesting getting to know your husband. Why did you wish to meet my husband, Mrs. Cheveley? I will tell you. I wanted to interest him in this Argentine canal scheme, of which I dare say you've heard. I found him most susceptible. Susceptible to reason, I mean. A rare thing in a man. I converted him in ten minutes. He's going to make a speech in the house tomorrow night in favor of the idea. We must go to the ladies' gallery to hear him. It will be a great occasion. There must be some mistake. That scheme could never have my husband's support. Oh, I assure you, it's all settled. I don't regret my tedious journey from Vienna now. It's been a great success. But of course, for the next 24 hours, the whole thing must be a dead secret. Secret? Between whom? Between your husband and myself. Your carriage is here, Mrs. Chief. Thanks. Will you see me down, Sir Robert? Now that we both have the same interests at heart, we should be great friends, I hope. Good night, Lady Chilton. Mrs. Chief's carriage.
good night, sir robert.